Well, did you know that Indiana is one of the nation's top 10 states for golf? Among Indiana's unique golf assets, the Pete Dye Golf Trail Seven Courses. Dye considered uh, in many circles to be the most influential golf course architect of the last five decades. The Director of Planning and Development uh, for Sports Tourism and Outdoor Recreation for the Indiana Office of Tourism Development. Uh, Noel Sidlick is here now to explain the relaunch of the statewide Pete Dye Trail. And uh, Noel, welcome to the program. Thank you. I, I, I mentioned that top 10 for golf. I mean, a lot of people would be surprised at that. We're going to talk about the, the Dye Trail, which is a lot of great courses, but Indiana in general has a lot of great courses. Absolutely. We have places to play all over the state. You don't have to just be in Indianapolis. Obviously, there's good courses here in central Indiana, but um, areas around Fort Wayne, obviously down at French Lick, um, and, and Evansville, Newburgh. I mean, mm -hmm. you could you could go statewide and, and find really high quality courses that host national and international tournaments mm -hmm. um, that are, are really the top of the line and are places you can go play. Yeah, and certainly uh, Indiana home to one of the great golf course architects, Pete Dye. His wife Alice as well was a great uh, designer as well who recently passed away. But uh, the Pete Dye Golf Trail was initially launched in 2011, relaunched last year. Talk about uh, that asset, those seven courses and the potential that you see there? Well, the state tourism office look, um, looked at ways that we could find assets in the state that we could improve upon, and this one was already there. It just didn't have a lot of mm -hmm. um, activity behind it. The courses mm -hmm. are still doing a great job. They were all doing an excellent job maintaining and, and yeah. promoting themselves, yeah. but it just helped to have somebody um, as a central point to yeah. kick that back off again. And that's what we did last year. We were able to dedicate some specific funding to promote golf as a whole, as well as to relaunch mm -hmm. the, the trail. And that was done through um, a re website redevelopment. We took on this year the Indiana Golf Guide and mm -hmm. producing that internally, which we hadn't been doing. And so really just putting a focus on how we can um, take this asset that we mm -hmm. have. People are very intrigued by Pete Dye courses. Some people love them, some people hate them. <laughs> right. um, and, um, and the challenges that they bring and ways that we could um, get that out there to let people know that they could just come to Indiana. It's that much closer. Yeah, great, great courses from the Brickyard. You know, Purdue has, has of course, so many uh, around the state, the, the, uh, the, uh, so many of them around the state. As you look at a $70 billion industry, the golf course uh, travel business. Indiana position to take a bigger chunk of that, do you think? Absolutely. I mean, we already have visitors bureaus around the state that are actively promoting golf um, for travel, um, not only through group travel, like small and large groups coming mm -hmm. in and actually just coming to golf, but other, when you're talking about the convention business that we have mm -hmm. um, already existing in places like Indianapolis and Fort Wayne and, mm -hmm. and um, Evansville that we're then uh, capitalizing on that to let people come here and play our awesome courses as well. Very good. Lots of golf courses. Seven courses on the Pete Dye uh, Golf Trail, which you'll be hearing a lot about in the months ahead. Noel Sidlick, thanks very much for joining us, and we'll Absolutely. talk to you soon. Thanks for having me. All right.